Hey everybody, just thought I'd do something a little different. I've been doing these Game Pro issues for a while, uh, since 2012, but I only did up to issue 76 so far. Um, I thought I'd do this, try a live stream with this, and see how it turns out. My web camera's not the best, so we'll give this a shot, see how it looks. Um, this is Game Pro issue number 76 for November 1975. My last issue I looked at was about a year ago, actually almost a year ago to today. It was number 75 from October 1995. So, let's uh, take a look at this uh, cover here. Can I zoom in a little bit? I'm kind of... Oh. Well, there we go. Hold on one second getting like two different things. Let's see if I can zoom in. Okay, let's see if that's okay. Sorry about that. So this is, like I said, Game Pro number 76 from November 1995. And turn on a light here. See on the front here, they keep going to... Uh, they still have a fighting game. This is in the mid-90s, 1995. So they have a big, big, big fighting game push going out. See on the cover here, you have Virtual Fighter. Uh, we have a look at Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, one of the best platformers for the Super Nintendo. Uh, you have another fighting game, Virtual Fighter for 32X this time. Tekken was just coming to the PlayStation. Review for uh, Yoshi's Island SNES. Wipeout for the PlayStation. Vector Man for the Genesis. Earthworm Jim 2 for the Genesis, Street Fighter the Movie for the Saturn, Mortal Kombat 3 for the Genesis and Super Nintendo, and for strategies, winning strategies, we have Tekken for the PlayStation and Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo. And you also have this little The Game Makers, Meet the Creators of Mortal Kombat 3 and NBA Jam on the front here. Okay, one second. Okay, so you open this up and you have a nice two part ad for separation and venom and Spider Man separation and anxiety. Which I've never played. Um, I know Maximum Carnage came in a red cartridge. This one, I don't know if it was a gray cartridge or just a different color. Uh, it is a two. It's like a side-scrolling beat 'em up. And I never played this or Maximum Carnage, so I don't know much about them. Here we have an ad for Secret of Evermore. This is very nostalgic for me because <clears throat> I think this ad probably got me to get the game. Uh, or at least realize it was coming out. So, Secret of Evermore was a RPG developed by Square's USA office. I think it was in Hawaii, but this was the only game they ever developed. Um, it used uh, a very similar engine to, to Secret of Mana, and it was uh, very much an earthbound feeling to it, where you were a boy in a small town, you get transported into a um, dream worlds of these people, um, called, like Evermore. And you have your dog that comes with you, and during each world, he turns into, like, uh, the first one is the jungle. He turns into, like, a big, like, burly dog. The second one is, I think it's a um, Greek island. He turns into, like, this slim um, greyhound and so on. I think there's, like, five of those dream worlds. Um, has, like, a ring system, like Secret of Mana. It's very good. Um, has, like, an alchemy system where you mix ingredients to do spells. It's pretty cool. Here we have an ad for Game Boy. This is the Play It Loud campaign Nintendo had in the mid-90s, mid to late-90s. Um, 
some really uh, grotesque ads here. This kid picking his nose. Keep your finger, keep your trigger finger warm. You're gonna need it. So you see, he's picking his nose here, um, and the different color. The Play It Loud Game Boys came out. I, I didn't know they had orange. They have orange. They have the regular Game Boy um, color, green and black and red. And they have the Game Boy Player there. They have a uh, C3 one. Just some games they're advertising here. Uh, Millipede, Centipede, Gal Galaga, and um, Galaxian, um, Nemesis and Joust, Space Invaders, and Missile Command. I think Space Invaders, one of the, I don't know if it's for the Game Boy Color or Game Boy, you could put in your Super Game Boy Player. Oh, it would have to be the uh, Game Boy one. It would go into Game Boy Play, and it is like the full arcade version of uh, Space Invaders on the Super, like inside the cartridge. It's kind of interesting if you played it on your game game uh, Game Boy Player. There's an ad for Street Fighter the movie, the game. Uh, I like the Street Fighter movie. I saw it in theaters, and I really enjoyed it. I never played the game though. I heard it's a pretty decent fighting game. Here we have a feature for the game makers. This month we talked to two of the best known programmers around around NBA Jam, Tournament Edition, Mortal Kombat, uh, Ed Boon. Mark Trammell, programmer of NBA Jam, picture of him. GamePro goes online. GamePro's new America Online webpage, they have a picture here of it. Pro Strategies, Chrono Trigger, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, and the Fighter's Edge this time was on the Tekken for PlayStation. There's a Game Saver ad here. Um, which I've never seen these in stores, or anywhere, actually, just this magazine ad made by Naki. Um, uh, you don't have to take it anymore. Games that last too long, games that interrupt your favorite TV show, now you you will roll with Naki's Game Saver Plus for Super Nintendo. The Game Saver's only backup, the only backup system that saves any game, any time, any place, anywhere. Not just at any level, but at the exact point you choose. So you put your cartridge in the back there, it looks like, and plug this into the top of the Super Nintendo, and you could save like almost like a save state anywhere, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure how much that is, though. Uh, Seeing that some other stuff they make, they have a power, car power charger, master switch, a pro pad, uh, screen covers for their Game Boy, pro fighter pad, and a turbo controller. Here's the table of contents right here. And kind of goes through PlayStation Saturn, which were fairly new. This is 1995, so they're really new. 32X, which was still new, Genesis, which was around since 89, Super Nintendo since 91, 3DO had just come out, uh, and you have the sports page here, uh, World Players Realm, which I always liked, Virtual Boy reviews here, and Game Gear, a few Game Gear reviews. And this is an ad for... I want to say Twisted Metal, but I'm not sure because it's PlayStation. I can't even see what it says. I don't know. I, I think it's Twisted Metal. Here's an ad for Killing Time for the 3DO, which I actually have this game in a 3DO. I do like this game a lot. Uh, my friend had a 3DO, and he had a, like, that's where I played it. I played this, I played the Horde and uh, Twisted, the game show, um, and he had Street Fighter 2 for it, it was pretty cool. Um, but it's like a, just a first person shooter, but you had like movie movie uh, scenes being played over top of while you were running around. You went to a cutscene and would play like a movie over top of it. Um, I haven't played it since then. I should actually play it again because I do have it and see if it holds up. Here we have Smart Shopping. This is a column here each each uh, each month or each issue 
they have like a column with uh, the editor or the game pros write a little thing on the side and they have like the letters from the, the readers. The con and so this is uh, the high cost of gaming continues to be a sore spot for readers. Comments about hardware and software prices for the much hyped new system have steadily poured into GamePro offices for the last few months. Uh, of the hundreds of letters and, and email we've read on the subject of video gaming economics, not one has been from a reader with money to spend. So they're just talking about the prices of games and how they're getting higher and higher with systems. And here's the corresponding letter that tells that, that made them write about this. It's price points. Uh, I'm, I'm responding to all the whiners who constantly complain about the high price of video gaming. First, it's a hobby. And like other hobbies, it's expensive. Accept it. I have friends who collect stamps, baseball cards, and coins, and their collections have cost them up to 6000 yet they never complain. Second, video gaming is a business, and companies must make a profit, so prices will go up as the co company's costs increase. Third, upgrading to a new system is not mandatory. Don't do it if you don't want to or if you can't afford it. Last, there are many ways to keep your gaming costs down. Buy used games or rent them, to name two ways. So, yeah, that guy was uh, not miss mixing words. Pick out another little ad here. Here's an interesting little Sega ad in here. Um, never saw it. Just goes on with uh, like the uh, Sega Saturn games, like they're on an entree dish. Sega Genesis games. 32X games, CD games, Game Gear games. I actually don't remember seeing this a lot. Maybe I never actually unfolded it before. Interesting. Uh, let's see if I can pick out a good letter here. Okay. Uh, here's one about Zelda. I am an avid fan of the Legend of Zelda games. Could you make it a, a list of all the Zelda-related games ever made? And he goes, this is... Bacon replies, there have been four Zelda games, and Nintendo's not running out of possibilities of another one coming someday. Here's the lineup. Here's the lineup so far. NES, Legend of Zelda, 87. Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, 88. Link to the Past, 92. Game Boy, Link's Awakening. And that's it. That was all the Zelda games that were out at this point. That is it. Uh, will Mega Man... Will Mega Man 7 ever come out for the SNES, Major Mike responds. Last summer, Capcom told us the game was finished, but it had decided not to release it, which is what we published in the mail. Second mail section of our August issue. Guess what? Capcom, Capcom says that gamers were upset by that announcement, and so Mega Man 7 came out this fall. We reviewed it in our October issue. So it just came out. So there's a picture of it right there. Here's the correction about uh, in their um, Cyber Speedway review. They just corrected it with the right scores. Here we have some awesome envelope art by people. Here's one for Weapon Lord. Uh, pick of the month was this one with... I'm not sure who's on that one. Here's one with Barney strangling a tri Triceratops or a, a T-Rex. Looks like a Lion King one, a Power Rangers one, or a Raiden one. A Virtual Fighter one, which is that's really good. And a Sonic one. It's a really good. It's an ad for Zoop, which is a puzzle game, I think.
Jaguar CD just coming out, or about to come out, Cutting Edge section, which covers like technology. As the Saturn and the PlayStation begin to grumble into the video game jungle, the Jaguar is ready to leap onto the fray with a CD-ROM peripheral. Of, of course, the Jaguar, the Jag, like the 3DO, has had a year's head start on the competition, but Atari is facing a new pack of high-tech video game systems, and it's hoping the CD will bring its cat back. Uh, a cat with big bite. The system specs are standard stuff overall, but the Jag CD could have had a personality all its own. The unit is basically a double-speed CD-ROM drive that moves at a 353 kilobyte per second data rate. The Jag CD, however, will get its claws from built-in Cinepak technology, according to Atari. The Cinepak Com compression system will enable programmers to create CDs that store more than 60 minutes of video and run video. An ad for Mighty Morphin Morph Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. I think this is the fighting game one. Yeah, it is the fighting game one. Hot at the Arcades Tekken 2 is just coming out. Alpine Racer, which is, I think it's a big, really big arcade cabinet. I've never actually seen it. An ad for Mortal Kombat 3. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. I'm seeing the previous kind of small. Okay, that's okay. Sorry. Here's an ad for Gex. Yeah, that's disgusting. He's eating like a bug. Some of these ads were gross. This is for Airstrike over Egypt. Or no, what is this game? Shockwave Assault. I've never heard of it. It is for the PlayStation. Sega's Top Guns, an interview with AM2. This is their hardware... Uh, or their arcade hardware AM2, I believe. And this is what ran, I guess it ran Virtual Fighter. Here's Virtual Fighter they're talking about, and Virtual Cop, which I think ran on AM2. A view of Virtual Fighter 2. An ad for Weapon Lord. Here's that the game makers and programmers uh, special feature on the front that was listed. Mark Trammell. Uh, yeah, he, they said he programmed NBA Jam. Oh, he must have did WrestleMania, the arcade game too. Uh, WWF, WWF WrestleMania for the arcades. And I talked to Ed Boon about Mortal Kombat 2. Arcades, this is an arcade, um, arcade game by Midway Open Ice. I've never heard of that. And they're, they're talking about some motion capture, capture with Mortal Kombat 2. Add for 20, Fan 2040. GamePro goes online. For almost a year, GamePro magazine has been deluge, deluded with, delu, deluged with letters from readers asking for a GamePro presence online. In late summer, those requests were answered. There's a picture of their homepage there.
getting Game Pro Online. How do you do that? Uh, with AOL, hours to operate, 24 hours a day. How to log into AOL through local phone access, every major U.S. and Canadian city. Basic fee, $9.99 a month, including five free hours every month. Hourly cost, $2.95 an hour after the free five hours. Computer requirements, Windows PC, MS-DOS PC, or a Macintosh with a modem. You're looking at these uh, very early uh, web browser interfaces here. It's kind of cool. Add for Wing Commander 3. This is for the PlayStation and Sega Saturn. WrestleMania the arcade game, which we saw with Mark Trammell. Frank Thomas Big Hurt Baseball. Tekken for the PlayStation review. They gave it very good reviews. 4.0 for graphics, 5.0 for sound. 4.5 for control, and 5.0 for fun factor. Jumping Flash for the PlayStation. Got really good reviews. It's like a, one of the earliest 3D platformers, which I've never played this game. I heard it's decent, though. Got pretty good reviews, 4.5s across the board there. Here We were speaking about Mega Man 7 earlier. That's, here it is right here. There's an ad for it. I don't remember seeing this. Uh, and, that, and in the ad, there's watch your favorite hero, Mega Man, every week in the second season of his top-rated cartoon TV series. And look for the brand new line of Mega Man toys from Bandai. The first 16-bit Mega Man adventure, the most devious villains of the future, has escaped from prison, and it's up to the Titanium Titan to bring him back. Join the robotic wonder Mega Man in his mission to stop Dr. Wily from destroying civilization. Wily's new pack of rampaging robots are deadlier than ever, and they all want a piece of our hero. Special cameo appearances by classic Mega Man villains Cutman, Gutsman, and Proto Man. Here's, an, here's a review for Wipeout for the PlayStation. Uh, they gave it very good reviews. 5.0 for graphics, 5.0 for so sound, 4.5 for control, and fun factor of 5.0. Doom for the PlayStation. Destruction Derby for the PlayStation. An ad for Night Trap. Total Eclipse Turbo, these are for the PlayStation, and the Raiden Project for the PlayStation. It's an ad for Gargoyles coming out for the Sega Genesis, which is I have, and it's pretty fun. I enjoyed it. It looks really good. It looks really, really good. It takes a while to learn how to move and control it, but it's pretty fun. It's an ad for Destruction Derby again. Here's a review for Astol for the Saturn. Got pretty good reviews, 4.5s across the board, or 4 and 4.5s mostly, except for controls, which got a 3.5. Doom Troopers for Super Nintendo, or Doom, yeah, Doom Troopers for Super Nintendo. Street Fighter the Movie for the Saturn. Primal Rage Ad. Mist. This is the port for the Saturn. Robotica for the Saturn. Here's a cool. I never took this out. Uh, this is a. I guess you enter to win something. Uh, play the Mortal Kombat 3 Doom match and conquer sweepskates only at Toys R Us. So I guess you fill out that card and mail it in. Not sure what you win. Here's the deal to conquer. Take the collecting, collectible game card to your local Toys R Us 
store and look for the match and conquer display. If your card matches with that display, then you've won a prize or send a self-addressed self self stamped envelope with your game card to the address there. Da -da -da. Valid until November 7th, 1995. Virtual Fighter for 32X and Pitfall the Mind Adventure. That's a fun game. I played on uh, Super Nintendo. It's pretty fun. It's also on like Genesis, Game Boy Advance even, and 32X here. Mortal Kombat 2. Emmett Smith's Football. Vector Man. Got really good reviews. Almost fives across the board except for Sound, which got 4.5. Add for x band which was the modem that you put on your Genesis or Super Nintendo and played online against people. Earthworm Jim 2 got really good reviews. This is for the Genesis. Mortal Kombat 3 for the Genesis. Really didn't get. I surprised it got that bad of reviews. Got threes for graphics, threes for sound. Control got a four though, and Fun Factor three point five. They say Mortal Kombat three is not a bad game. Critics take note. It's just not original enough, like Tekken, or deep enough, like Street Fighter, to warrant space on the casual on the casual Genesis gamer's shelf. Diehard fans will also notice the flaws in this version right away. But for those of you getting your your pens ready to write in, consider this. If you were to des you were deserted on an island with only one game to play, would this be the one? If the answer is yes, you deserve to be deserted on an island. Wow. And for Blockbuster video rentals or game rentals, Blockbuster. Dragon the Bruce Lee story for Genesis. Cats comic. Jaguar now at 149.99. Yoshi's Island. Uh, what a classic game. Uh, so they say Yoshi starts in this sequel to Super Mario World, which was one of the best Super NES games ever, and matches it in almost every right respect. Get those wishless ready. Yoshi's Island's the one to get this holiday season. So it got straight 4.5s across the board. Mortal Kombat 3 for the Super Nintendo did a little bit better than the Genesis version. Here's uh, how to get your hands on Squaresoft merchandise. You have a t-shirt here. I think that is for... Uh, I'm not sure what game that's for. Square Enix hat, or Squaresoft hat. This is before they were merged with Enix. Uh, uh, Kafka's Domain, Final Fantasy VI soundtrack, and Secret of Evermore soundtrack. Chrono Trigger game pack. Uh, for $79. Uh, Final Fantasy 3 game pack for $79. A Breath of Fire for $39.99. Secret of Mana for $69. And Final Fantasy 2 for $69.99. Batman Forever got really bad reviews. Uh, like a 3 for graphics and 3 for controls. That's the highest of the the scores it got. The mask for Super Nintendo, pretty average. Here's the uh, Panasonic 3DO. This is the top loading one instead of the tray loader. Demolition Man for Super Nintendo got pretty good reviews. Who developed this? A 
claim pub did they develop it claim or I'm not sure if they published it or if they developed it as well. It just says by claim. Speedy Gonzalez and Los Guetos Banditos got pretty middling reviews. Which I was almost I should I do have this and I played a little bit of it. It's pretty it's okay. I think this is D here. They're having an ad for D on the uh, 3DO. Oh, Winter X Games or the ASPN Extreme X Games for PlayStation. Space, Space Hulk for 3DO got pretty good reviews. The Dataless Encounter for 3DO. For the Neo Geo King of Fighters 95. Which I've never played much of any King of Fighters games. Uh, I guess Deion Sanders Primetime Football. Wipe out for PlayStation. Sports pages here. Extreme games. NHL All Star Hockey, 96. NBA Live. Emmett Smith Pro Football. Tecmo Super Bowl. George Foreman Boxing on Super Nintendo. And Wayne Gretzky Hockey, All-Star Hockey for the Super Nintendo. Another ad for Tekken. And role players realm. Here we have Lunar Eternal Blue. Got really good reviews. 4.5s across the board for graphics, sound, control, and fun factor. So they say Eternal Blue could appear to some as just another RPG, but the epic scope, appealing characters, and excellent cinematics make it much more. Any RPG fan looking for a legend lengthy satisfying trek should check out Eternal Blue. And here's an ad for Street Fighter uh, Super Street Fighter 2 bonus pack. Free six button controller for authentic arcade play. Oh, uh, this is an ad for the they say it's compatible for the X-Band modem too. So what system was this? This came with the game and a and a controlled turbo controller, six button turbo controller. I'm guessing it's Genesis, or maybe it was for Genesis and Super Nintendo. Here is a the strategy guide from the front for Chrono Trigger. So it looks like you're taking me up all the way here to medieval 600 AD. And then the 65,000 BC. And I think up to your fight with Magus. And I don't know if they go further than that. I have an ad for Earthworm Jim here. And this is actually, I didn't know it came out for the Game Gear as well. Uh, Game Boy. So it was Super Game Boy compatible as well for the Game Boy version. Oh, so Future Prospects Japan overseas. Uh, these are some RPGs that were or overseas. I don't know if we got some of these. Uh, let's see. Tales of Fantasia. I know we didn't get that for until I think the Game Boy Advance we got that. So they're saying, so i got to read this upside down here. Last month, RPGs, RP, uh, Role Players Realm featured 32-bit RPG titles for the Sony PlayStation and Saturn. 
This month we preview the big RPGs for the Super Famicom for Super Famicom SNES in J the Super Famicom in Japan. All all important RPG all important RPG market. In addition to the games described below, Quest Tactics Ogre, uh, the sequel to Ogre Battle by Enix, should be ready in, in October. Chunsoft Siren of the Winds, I actually never heard that, the sequel to uh, Torneko's Magical, or Magical Dungeon. Is that Torneko from Dragon Quest? Because I never heard of this. Well, Chunsoft, it would have to be Dragon Quest then, uh, is set for all for fall and Enix's surefire platform Platinum Dragon Quest 6 is tentatively scheduled for December. Square and Nintendo have announced a Super Mario RPG, a 32-bit meg collaboration between the two industry giants. It appears to be an action RPG featuring the all play the play dynamics and characters of the Mario series with a di diagonally land stalker like perspective. No release date has been set for the potential blockbuster. They're talking about Super Mario RPG. So all, out of all those, I think we only got Super Mario RPG. Um, that Torneco game, we did get a mystery dungeon for the PlayStation. So maybe that was that one that came over as well. And I don't know if we got Tactics Ogre. We got um, Ogre Battle, but I don't know if we got a Tactics Ogre game over for the PlayStation as well. I guess these are Tales of Fantasia screenshots here. Looks like a really pretty game. Oh, here we go. Here is Seku Densensu 3, which we finally got on the Mana Collection for the Switch um, as Secret of Mana, or uh, Trials of Mana. Um, we got that in like 2019 or 2020. So it says conti uh, continue Confused about the numbering of Square Japanese, Square's Japanese and English RPG names, the first second Descensi finally Final Fantasy Gaiden on Game Boy was released as Final Fantasy Adventure in English, and second Descensi 2 was translated to the SNES as Secret of Mana. In other words, SD SD Secret of Mana is an offshoot of the Final Fantasy series. In Seku, in Seku de Sensu 3, gameplay sur surrounding the mana stones is much more complex, with players having the ability to choose three characters out of six in Square's Triangle storyline. Yeah, that was pretty cool about it. That you can, there were six characters, and you could mix them, and, and their story changed, and they had a different end boss depending on who you picked. Uh, there was like three end bosses that you could fight. The six characters, including a mage, or be a beast, that's Kevin, a thief, which was Hawk, a warrior of six countries who have a, a war, and warriors of six countries who have con conflicting alliances. The game system generally appears unchanged in, is that, con and something the on-screen and includes the on-screen on -screen ring command for using items, change, charging weapons, and so on. It's unknown at this point whether the first Secret of Mana's uproarous three-player option will be available, but there will be a two, be two and three character combo moves and spells. The graphics effects for magic have been even enhanced, and new spells have been added. Including, including conjuring spells to summon servants, spirits, and monsters. Flaming the Flying Dragon returns to, to lift you to the heavens in this spectacular sequel. He, she is joined by Booksaboo, a huge turtle, oh, that turtle, that will ferry you your party across water. It's been a long wait since Secret of Mana, but have no fear, the sequel will set your mind on fire. Uh, yeah, we didn't get that until much, much later, like a, two years ago, 2020 or 2019. So it took a while to come out here. Romancing Saga 3, which we never 
got here as well. In Tenchi Sozo, which I never heard of. Never heard of. I've heard of Romancing Saga, but I've never heard of Tenchi Sozo. Uh, this is the first offering in two years from Quintet. Oh, so this is from Quintet, who did the uh, who did Act Razor, Soul Blazer, Illusion of Gaia, and I think another game. Uh, maybe maybe this was titled something else, and we did get it. This isn't Terra Enigma, is it? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. This is the first offering two year, in two years from Quintet, which made Illusion of Gaia, released by Enix in Japan and the in Nintendo for the SNES. The team also is known for Actraiser and Soul Blazer. Quietly toiled on this project, following up the story begins with a young boy named Ark. Yeah, this is this must be Terra Enigma then, because I think that kid, the main character in that, is Ark. Uh, no relation to Sony's Ark the Lad, who lives in a small village in a world on the inside of the Earth. Accused of serious crime, Ark is assigned the garden gar gargantuan task of liberating the planet and developing its civilizations. Uh, tch -tch -tch. Uh, where was I at? Uh, the Gargantuan task of uh, creation, scene of the birth of life, and so on, are deciphered, beautifully rendered, graphically. The game is very similar to uh, Illusion of Gaia and Soul Blazer, so it should. So it shouldn't stump diligent players, there's a strong chance that this momental, momentous RPG will be translated for your lucky SNES owners. Uh, it did come out in Europe, but it sadly never came out here. Uh, here's another ad for Virtual Boy Game. This is uh, Virtual Player Baseball, I think it's called. And you got an ad for Two baseball players here with their butt cracks hanging out. Here, two more uh, uh, reviews for Virtual Boy games: uh, Tellero Tel Boxer and Red Alarm. Got pretty good reviews: uh, 4.5 for graphics, 3.5 for sounds, 4.0 for control, and 4.0 for fun factor. I think this plays somewhat like Punch Out, um, and it kind of controls. I think it play. I heard it plays pretty well with the controller, the Virtual Boy controller. Red Alarm got pretty decent reviews, 4.0 for graphics, 3.5 for sound, 3.5 for control, and 4.0 for fun factor. I think this is like a space shooter, um, but everything's red, so it's kind of hard to differentiate between surfaces. Um, I've never played either of these. And here's an ad for Virtual Boy here. Where's an ad or a sweepstakes? When you have... When when, uh, where have you played a Virtual Boy? Uh, grand Prize, a Virtual Boy system, two Virtual Boy game titles, and a trip to Nintendo of America in Seattle, Washington to be a game tester for a day. That's pretty, I wonder who won that. First prize winners, a Virtual Boy system, and two Virtual Boy game cartridges. And then third prize, a Virtual Boy baseball cap. Game Pro, or second prize, a Virtual Boy Game Pro, a Virtual Boy baseball cap, and third prize, Game Pro subscription, Game Pro subscription, and a T-shirt, Game Pro T-shirt. Uh, game Gear, we have Power Drive, which is a looks like just a driving game. Chicago Syndicate. Madden '96. For the Genesis. Here's the Yoshi's Island strategy guide at the, at the, uh, in the, the front cover they talked about.
ad for Clear Seal. I don't even know if Clear Seal is still around anymore. SWAT Pro Street Fighter Alpha. These are, this is for the arcade. Genesis, you have Red Zone, which I've never heard of. Looks like a top down shooter. Neo Geo and Neo Geo CD, you had Double Dragon, which is the fighting game. I think this is based on the cartoon, maybe. It was out in the 90s. Genesis, you have codes for on SWAT Pro, uh, and SWAT Pro stands for Secret Weapons or Secret Weapons and Tactics or Strategy Weapons and I think it's Secret Weapons and Tactics. Uh, here's NBA Live for the Genesis, Saturn, Daytona USA, and Street Fighter Alpha for the arcade. Play as Akuma in the arcade. That's kind of useful if you had an arcade near you. Uh, here's an ad for the Sega Channel. You get up to 50 games a month. And can play them 24 hours a day and kick butt everybody's butt seven days a week when you hook into this for pennies a day. Uh, Saturn, Daytona USA, more tips or more codes and tips. Neo Geo, Fatal Fury 3, Street Fighter Alpha for the arcade. Super NES, Nintendo, Rocco's Modern Life, Spunky's Dangerous Day. Uh, play with the Nickelodeon Bone. Interesting. Super NES, The Death and Return of Superman. This gives you refill life bar and special attacks, nine lives and level skip. Earthworm Jim, special edition for Sega CD. Uh, Red Afro, Black Afro, Groucho Marx, and Antenna on Earthworm Jim. The Adventures of Batman Robin for Sega Genesis, a stage skip. It's an ad for Ridge Racer for the PlayStation. The Fighter's Edge covers Tekken. Basically, Fighter's Edge is just a strategy guide every month they had for fighting games, which were really big during this time. This is 1995, so this every month there was a new strategy guide or continuing strategy guide for a fighting game come, that was out or come, coming out or one in the arcades or on the home, home consoles. Here's some strategy guides you go to order here with this form here. Uh, you have one for Primal Rage official guide, Batman Forever official guide. Uh, this is for Genesis, SNES, Game Boy, and Game Gear. Uh, I don't know how it can, if it covers each, if those games are all different, so it covers them all differently, or they're all basically similar. Final Fantasy III player's guide. Uh, my friend had this one. I remember this one. Um, it was like in black and white, I think. I think it was the unofficial one. Um, Genesis Power Player's Guide I think it covers random games and Super NES Power Player's Guide so yeah you have to fill out this little thing here and send it in and then you get your guide however whenever they got it so you could use check, money order, visa or MasterCard and you write your number on their expiration date and send this in, send this in. Here's that strategy guide, still continuing from Tekken. Uh, more playing cards, like the last one I did last year on these. Probably my other videos on these Game Pro magazines, you see a lot of these same ads because for these Marvel cards. Uh, trading cards were really big in the mid-90s. More Tekken. This is Big Sky Troopers, which this was made by the people who did... Um, uh, what's that zombie f uh, top down shooter? Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. Uh, uh, published by JVC. I think it plays kind of similar to the Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, just more like fantasy sci fi. But I, I don't know, I've never played it. 
Tecmo Super Bowl 3. I didn't know they had three of them on 16-bit systems. Uh, this is always good. Game Pro Labs. See the, the new stuff coming out. Looks like a whole bunch of controllers. Uh, the big PlayStation paddle. The big game system makers seem to have decided that systems should be sold with only one controller. And unfortunately, the PlayStation is following their lead. But for about $30, you can add an another pad from a peripheral manufacturer, one that may include more features and be more to your liking. Here are three new PlayStation paddles for pads for those who want something different to plug in. The ASCII and ye shall receive. Ask and ASCII and ye shall receive. Oh, I see, it's a pun. ASCII who makes the controller and ye shall receive. From ASCII, look for the ASCII specialized control pad. Uh, where's that at? Here it is right here. You can probably barely see it. Uh, but it's like a, it looks like a batarang, which is uh, two handles on it with turbo. PS4 Pro Pad just looks like a chunky PlayStation controller. And the Fighting Commander two-way controller for PlayStation. SNES. That makes no sense. This SNES like six button. Oh, I guess because it has colors like Super Nintendo. Uh, but SNES is like in a diamond. So I guess they just added six buttons with Super Nintendo, Super, or Super Famicom colors on the buttons. That's why they said that. So this Fighting Commander controller, where was that at? Now this one's made by Hori, so it's probably the best out of the bunch. Actually, ASCII, um, I have one of their pads for Super Nintendo. It's pretty good. It's a turbo button. So these two might be good. I don't know about this one. Here's Buyers Beware. Every month, every issue of GamePro, they'd have people who would complain or write in about technical problems with or manufacturing problems with their controllers. So today it would be like Joy-Con Drift. They'd have something about it. So here we go. Uh, this kid writes, I am 14 and have been a GamePro fan for years. I have a question about Sega Game Gear. Why is it that the Sega discontinues distributing TV tuners? I've been looking for one for almost a year, and I can't find any. Can you ask Sega if they can't, if I can buy one that it hasn't, buy one that is, hasn't been distributed to a store? Please, I'll pay shipping and handling. So a Sega spokesman comments: the TV tuner wasn't in high demand, so Sega has discontinued uh, distributing the product through major retailers, but you might be able to find one by contacting smaller game shops in your area. Uh, here's one. That one might not be interesting to read. Let's try this one. I, pl I plan to buy a Saturn and a PlayStation, but before I buy them, I got to, got to find out if the wheel, wheel how, if the wheel, Warehouse or Blockbuster Video are going to rent games for those systems. Wally Knives, Wally Nines, the K of Blockbuster Video replies, in September Blockbuster will begin renting both PlayStation and Saturn games and systems. The deal will be running is that you can rent either system and two pieces of software for three evenings for $14.99. I've never rented a game system before. And that's that's not I guess two games and for two games in a system for three nights for fifteen dollars. Uh, but that's like four fifty or something per night. Or no, that's five dollars per night. So that's I guess I mean if you're a kid, that's kind of expensive. I mean, this was 95 so I guess that, you know, $5 was probably equivalent to, like, $10 now or something, $9, something like that. Uh, here's one. I was looking through some of my old issues of GamePro when I stumbled across a Super NES game enhancer called the Game Ma Mage. I got inter interested, so I decided I wanted one. I called the number, and they told me they discontinued it. 
There, is there any way I can get one? The watchdog replies, the game mage, which was originally marked and marketed and distrib distributed by Alpha Data US over a year ago, stopped production of the unit. We can only assume that the, f the fierce com competition and poor distribution led to its demise. I never heard of the game mage. Never seen one or heard of it. What does it do? Okay, uh, called the game mage. A game, and I guess it's like a game genie or production replay. But I never heard of the game mage. Uh, Rayman ad for Jaguar and Saturn. Short pro shops, sh pro shots, previews of hot new games: Donkey Kong Country, Diddy's Conquest for the Super Nintendo. Uh, SNES. Simians everywhere, stop looking for bugs and play attention pay attention. Here's an update update on the Donkey Kong Country sequel, Diddy's Conquest. The game games due out in November and it looks excuse me, it's looking good. More than one hundred new levels are being faithfully rendered by those geniuses at Rare, which is using the ACM graphics technique. In case you haven't been playing, paying attention the last couple of months, the plot, the plot is as follows. Donkey Kong Sr. has been kidnapped. Diddy must rescue him with a little help from Dixie, an ape, ape at with a blonde ponytail. The duo romps across the landscape in, in either one or two player action adventure gameplay. Each simian has a set of unique moves. Diddy... Are, Diddy's are the same in the original game, but Dixie can use her ponytail to whack unfriendlies. With the SNES game landscape looking a might a might arid, Donkey Kong Country 2 is bound to be a welcome uh, respite for cart-starved 16-bit game gamers. Kong could be king again this Christmas. Uh, I remember I went to my friend's house and he he rented this and that's where I first played it. Uh, a match made in hell. Uh, ad for Spawn. This is for the Super Nintendo. Looks like a beat 'em up. I don't know. I never played this. I remember there was a Spawn movie and a Spawn. It was really big in the mid '90s. Doom for the PlayStation. I heard this is a really good port. Of Doom, With, they redid the soundtrack. I think it's by Aubrey Hodges who did the soundtrack for um, Doom sixty four. It's very atmospheric in Doom sixty four. I don't know what his soundtrack is in this one though. WrestleMania the arcade game. Um, I was really into wrestling around mid nineties. Um, I remember Doink the Clown and Shawn Michaels. Uh, how cool is that? You can play as Doink the Clown in a wrestling game. Uh, ad for that Gretzky game, which got really toasted, roasted on the reviews in this issue. Wing Arms. This is for the Saturn. Mysteria, The Return of Love. This is for the Saturn as well. I've never heard of these two. Congo, the movie, The Lost City of Zin Zin Zinge. I've never seen the movie. I've never heard of, didn't quite, never played the game. Uh, Clockwork Night 2. Uh, Dungeon Keeper for the PC CD and Fade to Black for the PC CD. There's an ad here of this guy running fast. Hyperman is the game for PCs. Uh, that's what the ad's for. Uh, Criticom. This is for the Saturn and PlayStation. Silver, lo Silver Load for PlayStation and PC CD. Wing Commander 4, The Price of Freedom for the PC CD, A Train for PlayStation, Magic Carpet 2, Netherworlds for P PC, Space Hulk for PC. This might have been that controller we were looking at earlier. This is by STD. 
Hyper 3D Pinball for Saturn and PlayStation, 3D Decathlon for 3 Decathlon for PlayStation. Here's the Game Pro Tip Hotline. You can call and get tips. Here's some more STD uh, products here. Or is it Interact? Interact by STD. Centering boxing. Here's the price guide. Let's look at some prices here. So 3DO. Now this is 1995. Uh, you could get the MPEG module for it to play video. That was $200. Uh, I don't see the system here, but I'm 3DO system by this point was $299. So I don't know if these are used prices because I swear the 3DO was like seven six ninety nine when it came out. So they even cut it down a lot since then, or it's these are used prices. Um, PlayStation games you have for the system three nine three nineteen fifty two dollars for a lot of the games. Um, let's see if anyone jumps out at me. Uh, seventh guest was fifty two dollars. Uh, Syndicate Wars 52, WrestleMania Fantasy, I never heard of Warhammer Fantasy, sorry, 54, X Men Children of the Atom 54, Street Fighter Legends, never heard of that. Yeah, a lot of these games are $54. Uh, Virtual Boy games, they were running, the system was $179, the games are running you $50. Neo Geo, uh, this is for the CD console, so they're relatively still expensive but they're more palatable $69 instead of like two three hundred dollars for the AES con games Super Nintendo varied from $25 for or from $59 all the way to $42 all the way up to 60s 70s for some of the RPGs so you see they go into role-playing games here they're usually on the high end of uh, prices Final Fantasy 3 was 66, Earthbound was 64, Brandish 2 was 64. So yeah, pretty pricey. Genesis. Role playing Beyond Oasis 68, Lunar 2, Lunar, Lunar 2 Eternal Blue 49 for the second CD. Ultra 64. That wasn't even out yet, I don't think. And there, yeah, this is 95, wasn't out yet, but they had the system for 249. I guess you could pre order it. Alien vs. Predator. I don't think that ever came out. Cruising USA for 56. Doom for. The, Doom was not anywhere near being out yet. Because I didn't get Doom until much later. Um, Killer Instinct, yeah, the N64 wouldn't come out for another year, and that some of those games wouldn't come out till 97. Donkey Kong Country 2, you have this interesting box art, the placeholder box art, which is... It looks like they took the, the Pirates background out and just put Diddy on it. Uh, Secret of Evermore. Uh, Breath of Fire 2, Mortal Kombat 3 for 69. Secret of Evermore was 64, Donkey Kong Country 2, 64. So a lot of these have to be pre-order prices. Crusader No Remorse for the CD or PC. Jones Advanced Tactical Fighters. So these are all PC games. Microsoft Fury 3. NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Descent for PlayStation and Saturn. Siberia for PlayStation Saturn 3DO. Loaded for PlayStation and Saturn. And this is... This is a, this must be a video game store. This is called Crave Division Rockabilia Inc. Video Game Paradise. Only newest games, hardware, and accessories, t-shirts, caps, etc. Free t-shirt offer. Free catalog. Call today. I'm going to call this number and see if they're still up and running. Is it six one two? 
942 9920 Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number nope. and dial again. And Unfortunately, no. Nintendo's Ultra 64 display at SIGGRAPH, the guts of the Ultra 64. Late in the summer of SIGGRAPH, computer graphics show in LA had surprise visit for Nintendo Ultra 64. NEC had the unit and its boards on display through, the, through a window, with, though without a cart con or controller. An inside source identified some key characteristics on what he called an exceptional clean compact board. The compressor is the special chip made by SGI below the double RAM bus. Memory is a RAM bus expansion slot for extra memory. Arcade games for 3DO. Hoping to pump some new energy into the 3DO, Panasonic Software has signed an exciting long-term agreement with Williams Entertainment and Matsushita Electric Industrial Company Limited. The deal provides Panasonic software with the rights to sell 3DO versions current and future Williams arcade games, including some past arcade games. The first Williams titles will appear on 3DO. Mortal Kombat 3, which is scheduled to be released Early 1995, Panasonic plans to announce more titles shortly. Blockbuster World Champs The summer-long Blockbuster World Video Game Championships has finally concluded. More than 300,000 games gamers entered the world wide contest with 11 finals, finalists squatting, squaring off in San Francisco on August 21st. Uh, emerging victorious from the final group were a SNES champion, 15-year-old Leon Kane of Kingston, England, and Genesis champion, 12-year-old Ricky Fraser of Neptune Beach, Florida. The other nine finalists were Andrew Smallwood, age 11, New Albany, Indiana, Kelly Banach, age 13, New Berlin, Wisconsin, and Lucio D. Andrea, age 13, Salange, Salta, Argentina. Here's more game ratings. The Recreational Software Advisory Council, RSAAC, has announced a new rating system that evaluates games degree, a game's degree of violence, sex, or nudity in strong language or on a scale of zero. For the RSAC rating, do not presume to judge what is suitable for whom they simply disentain the product and leave the decision in the hands of the consumer. In other ratings news, Entertainment Software Ratings Board, ESRB, announced over the summer that it has already rated more than 500 console system games and 300 PC games since mid-1994. The ratings which GamePro runs with each review describe with which age groups games are appropriate on the basis of the game's violence content and adult content, among other things. Hot rentals for the November 1995. Number one for the Super Nintendo Killer Instinct. Number two, Mortal Kombat 3. Three, Batman Forever. Four, Doom. Five, Primal Rage. Six, Weapon Lord. Seven, Frank Thomas. Big Hurt Baseball. Eight, Might, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The Movie. Nine, NHL 96. Ten, Dragon the Bruce Lee Story. For the Genesis, number one, Mortal Kombat 3. Two, Batman Forever. Three, Conquer uh, College Football USA 96. 
four Prime War Rage, five Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, six NHL 96, seven Weapon Lord, eight Bank Frank Thomas Big Hurt Baseball, nine Dragon to Bruce Lord, Bruce Lee's story, and ten Comic Zone. Thing on the X Band, after a successful test of X Band modems in five cities around the country, Catapult Entertainment has made the video game modem available nationwide, blockbuster video stores, and software stores across the U.S. Beginning carry SNES and Genesis X Bands the, th the weeks of October 2nd. X Band modems allow gamers to connect their video game console to phone lines and compete with gamers in other locations. The units sell for $19.99 and unlimited play subscription runs $9.95 per month. In other X-Band news, Call Catapult plans Catapult planning is planning on Killer Instinct, Weapon Lord, and Mortal Kombat 3 to its menu of games this year. Here's some more controllers here. That Handy Boy thing, I remember, I never had a Game Boy, but I always thought that was cool looking. And an ad for Vector Man. So that's it. That's a look at Game Pro for November 1995. Uh, I apologize for this first live thing. It was probably kind of slapped together, and probably I was stuttering and not reading too good because I was reading upside down. I don't know how the quality was because my camera's not the best. So I don't know if I'll do more of these or not, but that was cool to try out. So I hope you enjoyed that for however long I was doing this for. That was about an hour and 12 minutes. Wow. Uh, I need to make these a lot shorter. Uh, so thanks to everybody who did turn in, tune in. And I'll do another one. I might post another video uh, with this, with uh, the next issue of GamePro. So take care.